Good morning and welcome to the Harvest Festival at St John's. Nice to see you all here. The Harvest Festival is being led by our minister, the Reverend Adam. We look forward to hearing from him today. Only one message, um, and that's concerning the Millen Coffee Morning, which is happening at the Taste Cafe on Friday at 10 o'clock. So if you'd like to pop in from 10 o'clock, if you'd like to pop around to support that, I'm sure you'll be welcome. Thank you, Adam. Well, good morning from me as well. It's good to be here with you on this celebration Sunday. And can I say that I am utterly thrilled, unless I've missed it, that there isn't a marrow. <laughs> as a child, the sight of a marrow would fill me with immense fear. Because they were, well, I won't tell you what, what, what I thought of marrows, but thankfully courgettes are okay. So there we go. But bless you. Um, and thank you for bringing gifts, which we'll um, give thanks for later on in our worship. Come, let us celebrate the wondrous gifts that God has given us throughout all our lives. God has blessed us with love and hope. Praise be to God who provides for us. May our hearts be truly grateful. And may we show our gratitude by the ways in which we live and care for others. Hallelujah. Let us worship our Creator God. And I suppose it's almost compulsory to sing certain hymns on this occasion. And we begin with We Plough the Fields and Scatter. So you can relax and enjoy this hymn of praise and worship. <laughs>
creator God, as we pray. Lord, we praise you for the ongoing demonstration of your creative power and your sustaining authority over all that you've made, for the love with which you made all things and the care which you lavish upon us day by day. We praise you, Lord of the harvest, for all the good things with which you fill our lives and the beauty with which you have filled the world for the abundance of your gracious gifts and for the joy with which you flood our lives, for the world in which you've placed us. We praise you for your sovereignty over all your creation and for your majesty as it's displayed in your world and for your glory which is reflected in everything we see and hear. Lord, we praise you and we worship we give you thanks and we honour your name, for you have not only surrounded us with so many beautiful things, but also you have given us the ability to enjoy them all and the ability to take responsibility for caring for all that you've made. So we praise you for Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, and for the harvest of good things with which he has filled our days the coming of the Holy Spirit and for the harvest of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. The fruit that by your Spirit we bear signs of your presence within. Lord, we come to praise you for the harvest of life and love and joy of knowing Christ as Saviour and Lord. May our lives continue to bring you a harvest of praise. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. The Psalms have been the church's hymn book for centuries. In fact, in some parts of uh, the world, they are the only things that are sung. So they are a beautiful legacy that has been passed down over centuries. And this is a psalm of praise, which I thought we'd share together this morning. If you would join in with the words in bold, and we'll share Psalm 67. <coughs> may God be gracious to us and bless us, and may his face to shine upon us that your way may be made known upon earth, your saving power among all the nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth reveal. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Right in the middle of that psalm. We, we use these words, which sometimes we, we say without really thinking about. This, these are the words, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. And why are the nations glad and sing for joy? We answered, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. I'm not sure we relish the idea of being judged, do we? But this is the reality that although the world is full of injustice and imbalance and inequity, None of that will last forever. God will resolve for all people the injustices that they face and the poverty with which they struggle. With that in mind, we sing again a beautiful hymn. Um, this might be to a different tune to the one you know, but you'll know the tune. And it was written um, and has been um, taken on board by various groups, I found this being displayed on one of the, I think it was the Trussell Trust, that God in his 
love for us lent us this planet, and that will lead us into our confession. <coughs> first with those of others a distant second. You call us to share your gifts with the world around us, but we're worried that there may not be enough. And our worrying gets in the way of our sharing. For all the times when we mistreat and misuse your gifts, for all the times we assume that we get what we have by ourselves, Get the thousands of people involved in bringing to us the things we need. Forgive us and lead us back to the path of wisdom. Say together words which remind us of God's forgiveness. God is a gracious giver. God is gracious in forgiveness. God calls us to new patterns and new life. We are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Just before we sing our next hymn, I just wanted to tell you something I think you may have heard before, but I think it's a wonderful fact. Did anyone here have toast for breakfast? 
I calculated last year that for one piece of toast to be on your table involved around 50 people minimum, and that's just for the week part of it, to enable you to have that. 50 people to whom we give thanks to God because we love our toast. It's good stuff. It's amazing. And that does include the ingredients like the water or the salt or the yeast. <laughs> so thanks to the Lord for so many who are investing their lives in providing for us and for many others. The next song you might not know, but uh, don't panic, you will um, can listen along. Oh, sorry, we've got readings before. We've not got that song. Can you go back? I see if that song. Okay, we'll go straight to the readings. Must be my imagination. There we go. <laughs> The first reading is taken from 2 Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 6 to 12. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, He scatters abroad, He gives to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of his ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is taken from Luke 12, verses 16 to 21. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store them all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves that are not rich towards God. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I saw in there sneakily, I put in between the readings, so can we go back to that song? We'll sing before we reflect on God's word. Lord, how majestic you are. It it's, uh, claims to be a modern hymn, but it was written in 1990, so it's not all that modern, is it? Um, Lord, how majestic you are. If you don't know, you'll, you'll pick it up as we go along. But Gillian's in the uh, congregation to so just follow. <laughs> Definitely there.
reflect on God's word. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word, both in scripture and in the revelation through Christ, the living word. By your spirit now, as we think about the words we've heard read, may we encounter that same living word, your son, our saviour, Jesus Christ, and be moved in our service and in our journey with him. Amen. Now, one of the things that I have always looked forward to in school, whether I was a pupil or whether I was a teacher, was story time. I don't know how many of you loved story time. Good, I'm glad a few of you did. And some of you may even share story times with relatives and other friends and, and the, the delights of, of our family lives. Or you might hear a book at bedtime on Radio 4. It's good to have a story. And it was always a treat, story time, which rounded off the end of the day. Now, in the infants, there were usually several stories to enjoy. They had beautiful coloured pictures and they might have even had, if you were lucky, a rhyming text. That always, for some reason, made it even more enjoyable to me. Especially if you were given the opportunity to predict what the rhyme might be. And there was always the fun also of watching your teacher trying to read a book upside down whilst showing you the pages. Um, that was a challenge. I learned to do that myself, to read upside down. In the juniors... There was another way of thinking about things, because it would usually be a book with chapters. You know, the books that junior children refer to as proper books, not like the infants have. And, and we would then be left at the end of a day with that, that East Enders, you know, do, 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 cliffhanger moment that writers were so good at putting at the end of a chapter. So you were desperate. And of course, if the next day the teacher was away on a course and you had a supply teacher and they couldn't do the voices, it would ruin it, wasn't it? <laughs> Stories play such an important part in our lives. We've heard and listened to and shared stories today. I'm doing it now. I love a story. And Jesus, if we're honest, could tell a cracking good story. The stories he told were so often to help people understand things that might otherwise have been hard to grasp. Or, indeed, and we hear this when Jesus responds to the disciples' questions about the parables at times, they were to conceal the truth from those with closed or stubborn minds so that it wasn't obvious entirely what he was talking about unless God was at work in that way to reveal it to you. Now, you might have a favourite parable. I'm not going to ask you all now what your favourite parable is, but there are some that are incredibly familiar to us. And it might be the parable is, is one you love because it's relatively easy to grasp or familiar, or it might be because it challenged you. I was um, preaching, and preparing to preach rather the other day about um, the wedding feast, which is coming up in a few weeks' time. And um, it's all going swimmingly. It's all going rather well. You know, everyone's been invited. And then all of a sudden they discover a bloke who's not wearing the right costume, so they tie him up and throw him out. And you think, what is being said to us there? Well, today's parable, the parable of the rich man, isn't one of the easier ones. It's one of the chewier ones. And at first glance, it seems to suggest that this chap, illustrated here by some wonderful actor, it seems to suggest that because of his behaviour, storing up all the abundance of all the wonderful things with which he's been blessed, planning a future of self-indulgence and luxury, it seems that God causes him to die. Perhaps a punishment for his wrongdoing. Now, if this was a literal interpretation of what God is all about, that people who act selfishly and hold on to blessings rather than making proper use of them might be punished with sudden death, 
I suspect that the future of humanity would be in grave danger and we'd probably end up on the endangered species list along with the African forest elephant at risk of imminent extinction because of our failings. But parables aren't allegories. <coughs> they are the means by which Jesus challenged people's views and caused them to stop and think about what they were doing. Now this picture you might not recognise, but a few weeks ago I was invited to play the organ in this very church building in Bexley Heath, <coughs> which is where John Cook was minister for a time, if you, if you are all wondering, and therefore it's a familiar sight to some of us. Um, and I was sat in the corner there for the induction of the new minister. Now when I walked in, many of the folk there had known me, because they were formerly at Welling United Reformed Church, they'd known me for a very long time. Some of them, pretty much from when I was a small child or even when I was born. And they hadn't seen me there now for a couple of years because with training and, and being here, I haven't had that opportunity to visit. And they noticed when I walked in, much to my delight, that I was somewhat less wide than I used to be. And they asked me about my diet regime, and I told them all about the things I wouldn't eat and didn't eat and shouldn't eat. And when I explained this to them, one of my longest known friends from there, actually was a Sunday school teacher of me, says, does this mean that you will no longer be regularly mentioning cake, chocolate, or sweets in your sermons. Anyway, that didn't last long, because guess what? Consider this analogy. Imagine that I had a large, large selection of delicious sweets. One could even describe it, perhaps, as an abundance of candy or a blessing of confectionery. It has happened at times, hasn't it? Yeah. But not anymore. Of course, if I had such a rich variety of sweets and delights, I could opt to eat them all myself. I could even do what I did occasionally do with the boxes of fudge. Gillian doesn't like fudge. Thank the Lord. <laughs> but my children did and do. And therefore I would buy, you know, the good stuff in the supermarket. I don't know why, but whenever I walked past that, it fell into my trolley. <laughs> Have you found anything like that? Yeah. And I would bring it home, and I would put it by the side of my armchair so nobody else knew it was there. And then you had the challenge of getting it out of the box, up your arm, and into your mouth, and then not have to answer any questions while you're eating it. I was terrible. But if I ate all those sweets, it would certainly be an overindulgence. An overindulgence is a problem for so many of us. I'm diabetic. We've got a team of ministers who share this wonderful and terrible thing. And we're both always encouraging and teasing each other about the prospects of what we might eat later that day. But I'm currently on a strict diet. Because the doctor says, do this or don't live. That's what you do, isn't it? You do this. So I'm not allowed to eat these things. So if I did, if I kept them all to myself, I would make myself ill and probably reverse any of the good effects on the health, on my health that I've had so far. I could also, and I think you'd be sitting there if I was up here now, tucking in, you could very, very easily judge me as being selfish. Especially if there are any of your favourites in the box. You know, licorice all sorts. Well, I mustn't think any longer, sorry. The error of the rich man in the story is how he viewed and how he managed the rich resources and blessings that he received. That's what he did wrong. It wasn't that he died because of his selfish action. But that his death in the story demonstrates the error and indeed the foolishness of his approach. All those good things were stored up in a massive new barn. Huge barn. And then he dies. 
what are they useful for then? Left to rot or go to waste. Because he couldn't take them with him, could he? But so much could be done with so much in store. Jesus said, so it is with those who store up treasures for themselves but are not rich towards God. To be rich towards God is to be generous to others in the use of the blessings that we receive, sharing what we can and what we have, the good of all. There's a little box of books over there on the top of the hymn book stand, which I noticed. All books to help us grasp our responsibility as stewards and to promote the eco theme. And I'm almost certain there's something in there about what we do with the excess food that we tend to, you know, you know the things you bought all in good faith, wish it to be healthy and then discover it rotten in the back of the fridge four months later. We'll do it. We were, people were accused during lockdown when they were stockpiling, you know, going and buying more than they needed and preventing others from getting what they needed. do with the blessings God gives us is what makes the difference. See, that's part of our harvest celebration today, isn't it? Yes, we gather with joy to give thanks for the abundance of God's blessings. We're not here today to feel guilty because we are blessed. I was told that by the vicar of West Hoadley the first year I went to we had a teacher in that village and we were planning the, hit, the harvest celebration for the school and he said, I said, I thought I might do something about um, poverty and he said, no. There are lots and lots of opportunities to think about poverty and about injustice and we're going to take those, he said. But for harvest, let's just celebrate what God has given us and how we can use it. We give thanks for the abundance of God's blessing. Paul shares with the Corinthians this message elsewhere in his letters. He says this, God is able to provide you with every blessing, and that's not just the physical things, but every blessing, in abundance. Why, says Paul, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. Now, it sometimes sounds easier to say that, but in a time when things are so tight, it is more of a challenge, isn't it? But we are still blessed, and compared to so many of the world's population, we live in relative wealth. But even around us, we see poverty. I read only the other day, I think it is now 29% of children in the United Kingdom are on the borderline or in poverty. Third of our children. We're richly blessed, friends, so that we can bless others. And it's not just in food and physical resources that we're blessed. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness blessed with faith. We're blessed with God's transforming spirit. We're blessed with love to share and good news to declare. As we live and speak the gospel, as we sow seeds of love and truth, we're blessed as God, as by God, by the spirit as he continues to shape and transform. As we give, we receive at harvest time, as we celebrate God's wonderful creation and God's generosity, we're invited and we bought some gifts this morning to share. We're invited to share those blessings, not just the physical things, although that's part of it, but encouraged again to think about the harvest of faith. One of the hymns we'll sing later, Come Ye Thankful People, come very quickly, lose his sight of the harvest of food and things. And suddenly we're singing about the harvest of the end of the age. And all things are renewed and God calls all his people home. We bring our gifts and ourselves 
as a thank offering. That's exactly what Andrew prayed in the vestry before that. It was a lovely prayer that we're not just bringing what we bring. We are part of the harvest gift that God desires and loves and delights in. We are a thank offering to God. You might recognise those. We used to have those in lots of churches, didn't we? You know those things you pass around, plates and things like that? Um, over at, over at Laceton the other day, I saw something I haven't seen ever before. They had a collection bag. It had four handles. It looked like some sort of... Do you know those stars that people throw in Kung Fu? I, I was tempted to cruise <laughs> beer out into the gathered congregation, but it was very impressive. But, you know, we don't pass them around anymore, but we do still bring our gifts and we present them. When I first started playing the organ as a boy, in my early teens... I remember one Sunday I had played the organ and a member of the congregation came up to me after the service and said, Adam, the music that you played during the collection was a little too cheerful. People prefer something more solemn when they're parting with their cash. <laughs> well, ever since then, if I'm playing during collection, I always purposefully play something cheerful. Why? Because of the reading in 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver. It's the word that we translate cheerful. But the word translated as cheerful here is a little bit understated because the Greek word is hilaros. Hilaros. And that's where we get our word hilarious from. This is always the moment when the church treasurer becomes very, very excited and confident that what I might be about to say may make a huge difference. But... Remember, it says that we have to decide how much to give in this way. Hilarious. It means full of joy, cheerful in our giving, and in our willingness to act in this way, to give of ourselves and all that we have. It's a real delight. I was searching for cheerful giver on um, YouTube, and I found a video of uh, the majority black church in London Pentecostal church, wonderful singing, wonderful music. But when it came to the collection, I thought, that's what they must mean by hilarious. Because not only were they full of joy, but they were, you know, you watched them and it made you laugh with joy. They had a big receptacle at the front. Idea for the elders, perhaps. And then they played some giant, you know, really upbeat gospel music and they were singing. And they were dancing up the aisles and then throwing in their gifts, and then continued to dance around before returning to their seats. And even in some of the African churches, a friend of ours visited a village where the people were, you know, far worse off than we can imagine. And yet when it came to the, the giving during the service, there was a party atmosphere. And even if they were only giving a little, because that's all they actually had, like the widow in the temple, they were really engaged in the joy being able to share in God's work through their giving. The Lord loves an hilarious giver. So as we share God's blessings, let's do so in an hilarious manner. Giving where we can, what we can, till our sides ache with joy. And give thanks to God for the blessings with which we are blessed we are called and encouraged and delighted to share with others. Amen. Thank you for bringing gifts this morning, which will be shared with those who need them. And there's lots of good stuff there. We used to sing a song in school. Um, the, the person used to stand and play the guitar, and as th th things were brought up, they used to sing, 
Someone's bought a can of beans, someone's bought a can... And they'd look to see what the children were carrying. And the children loved it when they suddenly realised that what they were carrying was being sung about. I'm not going to do that now. I'm not going to go through everything here. But thank you. Let's sing in praise of God as we, as it were, offer our gifts and ourselves to God afresh. And also our gifts of money. Praise and thanksgiving. Father, we offer. desires good for all creatures. Satisfy our hunger not just for food, but for freedom, truth, justice and love for all. We give you thanks today for your many blessings. Blessings of food and resources, of homes and of family, of people <coughs> to whom you call us to share the good news and share the blessing. Thank you for the call to your service, for the fruitfulness that we can exhibit because of your spirit within us. The risen Christ, you revealed to self, yourself to us as one who gives to the poor and cares for all people. So we dedicate our lives and our offerings to your service. Holy Spirit, bless these gifts and abide in our hearts so that our gifts and our actions may live out our faith, glorify God, and bring forth a fruitful harvest for your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord.
pray to God, the Lord of the harvest, that he will bring to fruition all that he desires for his creation, that his plans, his purposes, may be fully realised and fulfilled. Lord of creation, we see that the fields are ripe for harvesting. The fields of people, the fields for salvation and righteousness. We pray for your people, that we may be ready to live out our calling, to gather fruit for eternal life. Lord of the harvest, in your mercy, hear us. Lord, you've created the universe by your eternal word and have blessed humankind in giving us dominion over the earth. We pray for the world, that we may honour and share its resources, and live in reverence for the creation and in harmony with one another. We pray to be thanksgiving for all on whom we depend for our food and the other resources that we need. And we remember especially today those who struggle just to survive whilst trying to feed the world. Lord of the harvest, in your mercy, hear us. Father, your Son has promised that the Spirit will lead us into all truth. We pray for the community in which you've set us, for one another and for ourselves, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy and peace, and see others brought into your kingdom. And we recognise, Lord, that that may not be Walk to church on Sunday. There are so many ways which we together can build the kingdom and be church in different places and spaces. Lord of the harvest, in your mercy, hear us. You've given your people a rich land, yet by sin we've made a world of suffering and sorrow. And so we pray for those who bear the weight of this affliction they may come to share the life of wholeness and plenty. Life in all its fullness as you have promised. We pray especially today for the people of Nagorno-Karabakh in Azerbaijan as fighting finishes. Now so many are homeless and without food. Lord, may help be swift Pray for the people of Sudan as they face ongoing conflict, civil war, and we hear of news of the destruction of whole villages and the people's lives lost in what appears to be genocide. Well, so many times we hear of these things, and yet we hope that they were things of the past, and yet they exist and continue in the present. Bring peace and hope to those people. We pray continually for Ukraine. Things shifting, but Lord, we pray for an end. And an end to the loss of life and livelihood. Lord of the harvest, in your mercy, hear us. Your Son Jesus Christ is the first fruits of the resurrection and will reap the harvest of the dead at the end of time. We pray that He will gather us all together with those who have gone before in the banquet of the age to come. Lord of the harvest, in your mercy, hear us. So in a time of quiet, let's offer to God those things which rest particularly on our hearts today, that we may delight in knowing that God hears, that he will answer our prayers in the way that only he understands. source of all life and giver of all that is good. Hear our prayers and grant us all that is in accordance with your will. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now gathering our prayers and praises into one, let's pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Well, I promised it a bit earlier when I spoke of it. We're going to sing, Come Ye Thankful People Come, Raise the Song of Harvest Home. And it does seem that sometimes we're singing, Come Ye Thankful People, at the end of a service where we've just done that. But actually we continue in our thankfulness as we go out and take God's blessings to the world. Come Ye Thankful Do not worry about anything in life, what you'll eat or what you'll wear. Look at the birds of the air or the flowers in the field. If God takes such good care of birds and flowers, how much more will he care for you? So don't be afraid. 
said, may our lives be marked by compassion and generosity, sharing what we have been given with those in need, storing up our treasure, not on earth, but in heaven, in richness towards God. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, encourage and strengthen us in every good word and deed. Be with us forevermore. Amen.